brushing is violence And so is your silence when it's rooted in compliance To stand firm in loving defiance Make art your alliance, give voice to the fire Move people to the beat of the wind Gather yourself and begin to dance the song until it ends We are winners, champions of the light Forming in numbers and might Keep the truth close in sight Medicine woman Medicine man Walk in with grace I know your face And I trust your hand Hello! Welcome to the Simply Josephine channel. My name is Stacia, and today our episode is going to be all about rose hips. So this episode will be a complete herbal episode. I love the fall and I love gathering rose hips. So the first little clip, uh, the first part of this episode is going to be about collecting the rose hips and then I'm going to talk a little bit about drying the rose hips and then we're going to make a few things we're going to make an oxymel which is just a fancy word for an apple cider vinegar honey remedy we're going to make an elixir which is also just another fancy word for an alcohol honey herbal mixture and then we're going to infuse some oils i love rose hip infused body oil it's so nice and i'm also going to make an infused olive oil for soap making and um, the body oil we will do in avocado oil and these are not essential oils these are pure plant material infused in oils i make several things with the rose hips um, rose hip soap i love to make an herbal bar with rose hip soap and then um, i also make a few tallow balms and i make uh, a lip balm and a rose hip infused lip balm and on and on and on and on and on along with a collection with an oxymel elixir anyway i'm crazy about the rose hips and it's just a glorious time of year to get out there and um, experience the rose hips. And if you're only here for one little part of this rose hip collection video, then you can find the timestamps in the description box. Like if you want to just hop on here and figure out how to make the elixir, you can go right to that part in the description box. And if not, hang out for the whole thing and we'll cover, we'll cover all kinds of things. Here's my basket. I'm out harvesting these wild rose hips. It's just the perfect time. Rose hip season lasts a little longer at least in our corner of Montana, than a lot of other plants. Here you can see some of these. Some are kind of shriveled up, and um, that's fine. I'm picking those as well, because I will use those in the oil preparation for the rosehip soap. So some of the more plump, juicier ones will be for medicine, but here they are. Rose hips are in the rosaceae family, so they're in there with hawthorn and plums and all kinds of things. But anyway, yep, I just kind of pull them off of there. It's kind of hard to do with holding the camera. But anyway, aren't they beautiful in the sun there? It's a gorgeous day gorgeous fall day out picking the rose hips yeah so we will um, head home take these inside 
and I will show you how I make several rose hip herbal preparations. Looking at the rose hips here, after bringing them home, we took what was the old petals off. They're dried up on the end of the rose hip. We took those off and placed them on this screen to dry. And that was four days ago. So these have been drying for four days and they're about perfect to start making the medicine with. Again, how long you leave your rose hips, if you decide to do so, on the screen depends completely on your climate. I live in a very dry climate, and so these are drying up very nicely. They're um, squishy still, but starting to dry nicely. So I thought I would just share that. They've been on the screen for four days and I'm going to start with an Oxymel. Okay, now it's time to make some remedies. We're starting off with the, uh, I think we'll start off with the Oxymel. So the first thing um, we talked a little bit about the dried rose hips, and these rose hips, I'll show you, are looking so lovely. This is what we're going to start with. For processing all of the rose hip remedies and infused oils and whatnot, I like to buzz everything up in my food process food processor. And if you've watched any of my videos, I use my food processor a lot to break up the plant material, depending on what it is. I feel like the food processor is a quick way to just whip up the rose hips and we'll go from there. So... should work now and you know this is loud and annoying but it it's a really important step in the way I create things so bear with me here and that's good enough for me but you're welcome to do whatever you want I um also really want to just reinforce that however you decide to make your remedies, it's up to you. There isn't a wrong way to do this. I share some tips, but I also am constantly learning and you know, expanding my own knowledge and experimenting myself and finding better and better ways to create these remedies. So, you know, you have to start somewhere. Just start with, with what you have and go from there. So, these rose hips that have been drying for four days are now buzzed up. And I fill my jars about three-fourths full, seeds and all. Uh, you can, um, it's easy to remove the seeds in the straining process when you strain your remedies. And I do strain them through a cheesecloth. All righty. That there, oh, the smell, rose hips, they're like 
so sweet. They smell, I mean, they literally smell like candy. Alrighty, getting the last little bits in here. Eyeball botanicals. <laughs> I'm eyeballing it. So now that those are three fourths full with the plant material, now Oxymel and Elixir making is um, again very specific to you and what you like. I prefer my remedies to not be super super sweet. I like to do one part honey to three parts apple cider vinegar or alcohol because again the elixir and oxymel they're really similar remedies only ones with alcohol and ones with um, apple cider vinegar. So we'll set the elixir over here and we'll start with the oxymel. So I am going to weigh out my honey so that I get it just right because these things are for purchase. So uh, I want it to be consistent with what you've purchased before. But if you're just making this for your own personal, then you know feel free to just eyeball it. Okay, so this is two, four, six, so half gallon is eight cups. So I would do two, four, six, eight. So I will do two cups, which is 16 ounces. So I'm gonna start there. On the scale, I've zeroed it out. And then hopefully I have enough honey here to do both of these remedies. Sometimes, you know, over or under calculate, but I think I got enough. Alrighty, so that is getting close, getting close. All right, just curve it around there, try not to make a big old mess. And So that is 16 ounces of honey. Set my scale aside and then I will, um, let's see, oh, I got it out already. So I like to kind of pull the honey away from the side here so that the apple cider vinegar can get down in the bottom there. And I will that going. Oh, I didn't wipe down the lid. I want to wipe down the lid really quick. Because that would be a bummer. The little dust try to keep my remedies dust free. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of pantry dust never hurt anybody, but I think we'll try to steer clear of that for now. All right, getting the apple cider vinegar in there. Sometimes you will have to, like I said, pull the honey away. And some people like to infuse these separately, like to infuse the vinegar and infuse the honey, strain them, and then mix those together to make their oxymel. So again, it's completely personal preference. Whatever you feel like doing, you should do an experiment and, you know, just go from there. I broke my stick here. So. Now that that's gotten all down there, add a little more vinegar.
And you can use, of course, whatever vinegar you want. This is just, I order raw apple cider vinegar from Azure in this five gallon bucket and I feel like it is a great price and I'm really happy with it. Different people like to use different things, you know, so whatever, whatever you want to do, feel free to do. I just like the apple cider vinegar because you can just use it for so many things. Speaking of so many things, this rosehip oxymel is absolutely delicious. It makes a incredible mocktail. I like to mix it, um, you know, as if it were the alcohol, like the bottom quarter of your cup is over ice. This obviously strained oxymel. And mix that over ice with a fresh lemon and sparkling water. It is such a refreshing beverage. It also makes a great meat marinade, um, excellent on salad dressings. It's endless. You can put it in, you know, you need to add a little vinegar if you make your own bone broth. You could use this infused oxymel. It's kind of like Whatever you're creating, you should experiment with it. But I love it. Meat marinade, uh, alcohol-free beverage, and um, the uh, salad dressing. Makes such a good salad dressing. Okay, so once you have everything in your jar, I put a wax paper down and then the lid because apple cider vinegar, well, any vinegar, whatever vinegar you're using, is going to corrode the lid. And then I just shake this over and over and over again throughout the next few days until the honey gets dissolved in the vinegar and herbal mixture. And if it does settle some, I'll top it off with more vinegar. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. So just kind of keep an eye on it as you're shaking it throughout the next couple of days. Check it out, see, oh, does it need a little more vinegar? Yeah, yes or no. And then, now, I think that's enough for this video anyway, because I will continue to shake this throughout the next few days. So I'm going to label this with what it is and the date. And then in six weeks, eight weeks, again, it's really personal preference. Nine weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whenever you get around to it, you can strain this. And I strain through a like a regular strainer with cheesecloth around this into whatever you're going to strain it into. I just use like a big measuring cup thing and strain it and then bottle it. And you could put it in, in anything. Sometimes it's kind of nice to, um, if you have a fancy a bottle of wine to keep the bottle because they're pretty or just a regular boring, it could be just a boring old bottle that you strain it into. And then I will label it again too once it's in the bottle. You know, just a boring old bottle or a pretty bottle. Once it is in there after six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, however long you want this to infuse, then, you know, it's just ready to use, ready to throw in your marinade, ready to put on your salad, ready to mix with your sparkling water. It's just ready to go. So anyway, now that this is created, I will, oh, it's so pretty. Rose hips, oh, they're just, they're just such a magical fruit, you know, and so beautiful. I love it. Okay, so I think that about covers the Oxymo. Now, I will move on to 
oh, I need to get another stick for stirring since I broke that one. Okay, I can label these after the video, but just make sure you do label them. Otherwise, I'm telling you, you will forget. You'll be like, no, when did I do that? I mean, you have an idea because it's fall, so obviously you created your rose hip remedy in the fall, but it is so important to label, label, label. Okay, elixir making. So we're starting off with the same process, going to go 16 ounces honey for a half gallon. But again, it's personal preference. Some people make these remedies half and half with the honey and the alcohol or the apple cider vinegar. If you like your, your stuff really sweet. I prefer the one to four ratio. So here we go. Getting close. Uh oh, hopefully I have enough. <laughs> I know it's always lovely when you're making a video and then you're like, oh, oh, wait a minute. I was going to do this, and now I'm doing this. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have enough here. But I may have to stand here for a minute. So, elixirs. Elixirs are fabulous for many different things. You can use them in cocktail making. You can put them in tea. And the alcohol you choose to use, again, is personal preference. I, like, I feel like brandy goes really nice with the rose hips. And I feel like brandy is a nice alcohol to put in tea. And I really like this remedy in tea. It's good, though, also like the Oxymel, the mocktail, it's also nice as a cocktail to mix with fresh lime. Fresh lime goes so good with rose hip and sparkling water and then this brandy remedy. That's really delicious too. Or you can just take a few drops in a dropper bottle for a little rose hip magic throughout your day. <laughs> Never hurt anybody. Okay. So, like I said, this elixir, three-fourths full with the plant material, two cups of honey, and then the rest is going to be brandy. But this would also be very, very delicious with vodka, and then you have just the flavor of the rose hips, too. So, again, whatever you find that you like. And the process is the same for the Oxymel that it is for the Elixir. You want to let it infuse for at least six weeks is pretty much the standard. But, you know, maybe you're having a little party and it's only been four weeks and you want to serve this as your drink. Well, you know, that's fine. There really aren't any rules. You should experiment and you should make what you want. So, or if you get overtaken by the holidays and it's three months before you get around to straining this, well, you know, that's fine too. I typically go at least six weeks. So, there. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Kitchen witchery with the rose hips. We're having, we're having, oh my gosh, we're having such a nice fall here. Yes. Just the days have been so warm still. Here we are into October, and it's just one gorgeous day after another. 
we have had smoke, of course, and haze due to the wildfires, which we don't have any near us at the moment. And I feel like we're far enough into fall that we won't, but, um, you know, they aren't too far away, that's for sure. And so this is the, going to follow the same process as the oxymel. I'm going to cover it with wax paper and shake it really, really good and shake it throughout the next couple of days. How you can be done shaking is when you, you know, roll your jar around, you know, and see how this honey is sticking to the side. When it no longer does that, then you can be done shaking, shaking it. So I'll just continue to do that over the next few days with both of these. And then they can just sit on the shelf. I like to keep them out of direct sunlight and just let it sit and do its thing until you're ready to strain. Strain and bottle. You could bottle up some of these in dropper bottles and hand them out for, for Christmas gifts. People can add them to cocktails, add it to tea, um, do whatever they want. Or you could put them in fancy little bottles as part of a holiday, holiday gift set. I am working on the Rose Hip Collection so that will be available right before the holiday season. So that's what these are gonna be. But anyway, there's the elixir, there's the oxymel. Aren't they fabulous? Alrighty, and I think that kind of wraps up this little segment of the rosehip medicine making. And then we will move on to the infused oils in a few more days. These I tried, like I've said many times in the video, <laughs> for four days. And I think I'll I think I'll wait maybe another three or four days for those other rose hips and then um, that are drying on the screen over there. And then I'll do the same process, buzzing them up. But I'll film it and it'll be part of the deal. But for the oil making, for the oil making, I want them to be a little more drier than they are for the Oxymel and Elixir. And again, it is whatever you want to do. You can dry your rose hips completely and then make all of these remedies, or you can pick these rose hips and make them all fresh the day you pick the rose hips if you want. I, this is how I like to do it. A few days for these and a few more days for the oil and then, um, and then go from there. So anyway, I'll be back in a few days. Bye. Hello, hello. I am back to film the oil infusing part of this video. And so it's all about the rose hips. Rose hips, rose hips, rose hips. I've been drying them for, I would say, these have been drying for about a week and a half. And they're still, um, this is when I like to turn them into the oil, but things don't always go perfectly planned. But for me, I like them to be mostly dry, but still like a little squishy too. I feel like in this time period, they're really, um, really, really sweet smelling. And I feel like the oil gets um, nicely, nicely infused with a sweet smell and um, you still get a lot of the wonderful properties of the rose hips. Now this oil I made a 
let's see, a while ago, a few weeks ago, and I just continue to stir it, but this is um, the body oil, which body oil, I like to use avocado oil, and for the soaps, I like to use the olive oil. So olive oil for soap, and avocado oil for body oil, but it's totally up to you what oil you decide to use. It really is personal, personal preference. But like I said, I like the avocado oil for the other things that I make to the um, tallow lip balm and the whipped tallow balm and the body oil, I prefer avocado. I love jojoba oil, but it's a bit pricey, so um, I make the body oil the same as I make the oil for the soap, so that's what we're gonna go with today. So after you have, you know, pulled all the little, the ends off the rose hips, which that was the petal, Part, the flower part um, and you've allowed them to dry for a little while then I like to process them in the food processor and um, just to kind of open them up a little bit and you know get some of the seeds out you don't have to put all the seeds in um, these are strained really well um, before they're created into anything because rose hips do have those hairs inside of them that are kind of irritating. I've even gotten some on my arm here and it's kind of itchy. So when you do strain any of your products for anything, just make sure you use um, cheesecloth or sometimes I will actually double the cheesecloth over the strainer. That way none of those irritating hairs get in there. But so, are you ready for how easy this is? <laughs> I know this is annoying, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm constantly using this thing to break up the plant material. I just find it works really well, but it is annoying, but we'll go ahead and get that, get that over with. up fairly well and dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna get that into here and um, so you are welcome to use whatever um, ratio you like you know the stronger the more rose hips you use, the stronger it will be. I tend to use about half, half and half, maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. And the rose hips have been broken up very nicely. And a lot of the seeds have gotten, gotten out. And a lot of those fine hairs too, but that's fine. into the uh, body oil there. You can, you know, weigh this out and get it exact if you choose to. I don't. I just sort of plop it in there. All right. I'll stir that up in a little while. I do stir these um, after 
after the oil is in there, I do, um, you know, check in on it and make sure, you know, it smells good. There's nothing funny going on with the oil. I find the breathable top really helps with that. Um, not everybody uses the breathable top. Some people, um, you know, cap it and shake it and... I just really want to drive home that there really isn't a wrong way to do this. You should just go with, you know, what you feel like doing, give it a try, and then go from there. Because there's so many other factors in herbalism that have to do with, you know, like your climate, for instance. Do you live in a really moist climate or a really dry climate? You know, these are all different factors to factor in. and how long it will take your plant material to dry, and on and on and on. So anyway, I have this about, about half full with the um, food processed rose hips that have been dried for at least a week and a half. Again, it's a dry climate here, so if you lived in a very moist climate, you might want to dry them for a couple weeks. Or, or longer even. You can dry them out completely or you can process them very, very fresh. This is just um, what I have found works best for me. So anyway, ta-da! You just infuse your oil um, with these rose hips. Now, how long, how long, how long? Again, completely up to you and what you want to do. I like to let my oils infuse for at least six weeks, but I generally like to go a little bit longer. I like the 10 week period, but again, it doesn't always work out exactly one way or another. But I generally shoot for about 10 weeks of infusion. And I do not use the in-sun method. I put them on this shelf here behind me. And uh, it's out of direct sunlight. I feel like the sun breaks down the oils. But some people like to put their oils in the sun. So, again, whatever you want to do, I get my breathable top here. Let's see. Might have to find a bigger one. These are all smaller. Smaller ones, it's looking like. Should have got this out ahead of time. Oh, maybe that one will work. Okay. Um, so. I just put my top on and label it and then check on it every couple of days. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of a difference here, although this is a different oil, but you can see it infusing in there. So um, I'm just going to let this sit for right now, but in the future, in a few days, I will do, I'll just go check it out, give it a smell. Oh, it smells, rosehip infused oil smells literally like candy. I love it. But I will just give it a really good stir, stirring up all that stuff from the bottom. And the best thing I can say about making infused oils is just check on them. You know, if you, put a cap on them and just put them somewhere out of the way and you don't think about it, you're, you're probably going to end up with a mess. Maybe not the first or second time, but eventually you're going to end up with something really funky. So yeah, that's how I do it. I just stir it up and then I'll put these over on the shelf and just check in with them in a few days. See how they're doing. See how everything um, smells and give it a good stir. Alrighty. So that's that. Six 
8, 10, 12 weeks, whenever you get around to straining it. Make sure you use two layers of cheesecloth, or you can use um, sometimes like um, handkerchiefs or napkins, um, cloth napkins, you know, um, cloth dish towels can work, um, can work well too. And so there it is. These will be ready shortly for, let's see, this one's got, um, another month or so, and then I'll be straining this and um, it will be part of my Wild Rose Hip collection, which I plan on releasing right before Thanksgiving, so it's available for the holiday season. It's going to consist of a Rose Hip body oil, lip balm, two tallow bars of soap, an elixir, and an oxymel. Oh, and some. I'm also going to put in some dried, dried rose hips, so you can experiment with making your own stuff or just throw them in um, tea, make a tea out of them. So dried rose hips, body oil, soap, lip balm, oxymel elixir. It's going to be a big package deal, and so that's what I'm creating all these for. And I think that. That about wraps up this rose hip video. Thanks for stopping by. Again, my name is Dacia, and I am the maker behind everything at Simply Josephine. You can follow along with what I'm doing um, over on Instagram. I'm Simply Josephine there. I have also recently um, joined TikTok, so I'm on TikTok simply, simply underscore Josephine was already taken, so I'm just simply dot Josephine on TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. and um, simplyjosephine.com is where you can find all of my offerings along with blog posts and um, you can send me a message there and communicate further if, if you feel so inclined. And um, other than that, I guess, happy fall. Wishing you all a wonderful autumn season. Bye.